Hi everyone and welcome along. Now we may be well into Advent but we've still got our December word art to do so we're going to do that today so grab your paints and let's get started. The first thing you need to do is draw a circle on your piece of paper. I used a compass you could just draw around something if you like and the next thing I'm going to do is mix my colours and I will tell you all about our sponsor Skillshare. Um, just in case you're not already familiar, Skillshare is an ad-free online learning community with new premium classes launched each week and whilst you can use it to further your career, add new skills, it's also really really good to um, benefit self-care because your day-to-day -day is filled with tasks and endless to-do lists and if you could prioritize self-care um, it would just really help your wellness and, and Skillshare is actually really great for that as well um, because I think we're all guilty of putting that to the bottom of our list so I am loving at the moment the class the ultimate self-care playbook discover and nurture your centered self with the fabulous Jonathan Van Ness it's an absolutely wonderful class full of positivity and uh, yeah just reminds you how important it is to look after yourself um, and the tutorials or the Skillshare videos are all um, subtitled um, available with subtitles in Spanish French Portuguese and German and the first thousand people to use the link in my episode notes will get yourself a free month's trial of Skillshare so what are you waiting for join up now and just become your best self with Jonathan Van Ness's class. Okay, so I've got a really nice wash now of cobalt turquoise and I'm going to use my size eight brush to get this right into the corners. Oh, the corners, there's no corners of a circle. What am I talking about? Right up to the edges. And I'm going to just keep on moving this color around the color itself is very dilute um, but I'm also going to be adding some general wetness to the circle to just keep that paint traveling across the page and get this circle filled in and then we'll let it dry 100% and then we're going to paint the flower of the month and I've not actually told you what it is yet we're going to paint some hellebores um, because they are a beautiful winter flower and one of my favorites to paint now that's dried we can draw in some flowers so I'm gonna have them coming up uh, and an over and out. Okay, so we'll have a, an open flower here. So I'm just drawing a little sort of circle slash oval. We'll have another one here. And then we'll have one kind of drooping out there. And we'll have one sort of coming over the top there. So I'm just sort of drawing in that sort of curve of the bell shape of the sort of slightly drooping flower. And then we'll have some buds just coming out there. And we'll have leaves, leaves there, and maybe another leaf. Okay, so we're going to use some permanent rose mixed up a little bit and what I'm going to do we're going to do some slightly simple hellebores um, they're a five petal flower and what I'm going to do is paint in a fairly dilute petals uh, and I'm actually going to paint them all in at once Ooh, my printer's just woken up um, I do my tutorials in my office where we pack all our orders and do all the work so every now and then the printer likes to pipe up and 
claim their rightful spot as possibly the hardest working member of De Winton Paper Co. Um, that printer has been with me for about 10 years, still going strong. Okay, so there we go, we've got a nice dilute hellebore. I'm just making sure there's not too much colour in the centre there. For this one here, it's a little bit more on an angle, so the petals are going to be a bit sort of squashed around the base there. That's why it's so handy to have a uh, that sort of central oval there. Just to sort of anchor all your petals. And then for the open, as a drooping half open flower, we're just going to do a few petals coming out from from there as well. I've got a bit of fluff on the brush. Oops. There we go. It's quite funny because this is not Christmassy really in its colour or tone, but of course not everybody is concerned with Christmas and we've done a huge amount of Christmassy tutorials so it's really nice actually to just do something a little bit different and then we'll have a sort of like I said a, a bud formed flower so one that's just on the cusp of opening up Just one or two little buds that really haven't opened at all. And because we painted that um, a circle really nice and dilute it meant that the flowers also could be nice and dilute so we're just going to let that dry and then we'll start adding uh, stems and leaves and details I've mixed some Payne's grey with my sap green just to get a slightly deeper colder green color and I'm going to use my size 4 brush to paint in some leaves and I'm just doing a sort of three-pronged leaf. You can see I just need a little bit more water. There we go. And then I'm going to pop in just a few leaves, just where things are growing or at junctions. And now I'm going to wake up the alizar in crimson, and I'm actually going to add that in to there to create the stem colour because you do get a lot of the sort of dye from the flowers into the stem but we just need to let our leaves dry and then we can get the stems in. I'm now going to take my two tenths brush and I'm going to begin to 
draw in the stems. So we're going to have places where they sort of disappear behind the flowers or the leaves. And there'll be places where we can paint them over the top of things as well. I quite like painting with sort of two parallel lines and then using a bit of a bit of water to sort of colour in and blend. And we're going to have the stems sort of disappearing down into the circle. So if your pencil lines haven't sort of gone all the way down, you'll just need to have a think about how everything connects. So I've got a bit of uh, green gold and, and cadmium yellow mixed together here and I am going to place in plenty of little anthers, little dots basically, using the central circle slash oval of my flower drawing and if you see I've just used the, the, the bottom edge of the circle and then gone outwards a little bit from it and then I'm going to take four tenths brush and just do one or two little lines just sort of bringing everything in to the centre I'm going to repeat that here, but because it's on more of an oval, the circles are going to be higher up and then we'll sort of they'll come down to about there. As I said, this is a sort of slightly simplified hellebore, which is quite nice to do. We do have a more detailed one in uh, the flowers and foliage playlist if you're ever interested and you want to have a really good go at doing a bit more of a sort of detailed botanical painting. They are really bewitching flowers I think. It's just amazing to have something like this at this time of year. And then what I'm going to do whilst those dry, I'm going to change my water over because it's a bit green. Time for a fresh one. Make sure my brushes are clean as well. You can still see that bit of green on the kitchen roll. That's what this piece of paper is for, just to make sure my brush is nice and clean. And I'm going to take the Alizar and Crimson and start to do some rather fun detail on my petals. Um, so I'll just avoid the, uh, the open face flowers just to begin with whilst we let the green dry and I'm going to just be adding some little colourful sort of veins to bring them to life just a little bit. So I'm using my two tenths brush and you can see for the little buds it's just a case of, sort of starting from the base 
curling those up and then from here these ones where we've actually got petals established what we can do is actually sort of establish the shape of a front petal just use water to draw that color down So there's our central petal there. And then just using water to get a few sort of lines, a bit of detail, but using it really dilute. And then just a few few brush strokes will, will help there. Now the uh, centers of the open hellebores have dried, I can now embark on painting in petal detail. So I'm just establishing the outline of a petal, being careful not to get too close to the green colour. Even though it has dried, it, it can travel quite a bit. So, um, so I'll just sort of pick up a few petals like that. And then with these ones, we can just sort of pop a few strokes like that in. Okay, and then the ones that have dried, we can just add a few extra little lines of more concentrated color. It all helps just define and, and sort of make it pop a little bit more. And then a few other little things we can do. Uh, I'll just get my rigger brush here. I'm going to mix up a little bit of the green and Payne's grey mix, but just sort of dominant with Payne's grey a little bit more and create a few little leaf lines. The rigger brush is so wonderful for this. It's a brush that I do sell in my shop if you want to get your hands on one. And we'll also just pop a little bit of sort of dark shadowy green on the underside of some of these anthers and that just helps them stand out a little bit more. especially in the middle there, where it might have become a bit blobby. So we need to put our actual month in for our word art month, um, December, another long one. So I think I'm gonna just put it along the curve at the top there. So I'm just gonna put some finishing touches to the flowers, get it all dry, and then we can do our wording. So as has become the tradition with the longer months, um, I'm going to do it in quite simple lettering. Um, December is D-E-C-E-M-B-E-R, eight letters, so D-E-C-E, -E. the middle is between E and M, but I'm going to have the middle sort of there, I don't want it fully central. So 
I'm going to have a gap and then M, B, E, R. This is how I always work out my lettering. And then I tend to find when I'm painting it, I want to sort of do it a bit differently. But that looks, yeah, that looks pretty nice to me. But I can already see that sort of feel like the D is a bit sort of closer to the flowers. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But we'll get Payne's Grey. And because I'm left-handed, I need to start on this side to get my lettering done without smudging everything. So I'm just using sort of wet but fairly concentrated Payne's Grey and there's a nice fairly simple it's not really a font as such it's just sort of capitalized lettering can be quite good is just trying to keep your midpoint of your lettering consistent and that that's just a nice way of making it look a little bit more uniform so I'm just going to let that dry and whilst I do, I just add a little bit of Payne's Grey shadow to just the underside of some of these stems. And then we'll rub out the pencil and we will have our final word art piece of the year. Can you believe it? We've completed the little series. And there we have a lovely uh, final word art of the year. Um, it's been a lovely sort of relaxing and therapeutic process for me. Um, another way of just making yourself feel good, isn't it? Just, just doing a, a bit of a ritual every month. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you again for our next painting. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say another thank you to our sponsor Skillshare and to remind you that the first thousand people to click the link in the episode notes below get that free month's trial on Skillshare. Of course, if you never want to miss another video on our channel, just hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye!